Welcome to Security Insights, where we talk about some of the big ideas circulating in today's security industry. I'm Margie Gerwin, and this is part two of a three-part conversation we're having about the convergence of physical and cyber security. Once again, here are our panelists. Bobby Varma is CEO and co-founder of Princeton Identity, an innovator in iris and face biometric identity solutions, and a recipient of the 2022 SIA Women in Biometrics Award. Robert Skena is CEO and co-founder of Ragent Corporation, which pioneered the development of kinetic mesh networks. Since 2001, he has grown the company from a startup to a global leader that does business in over 75 countries. And John Nemirovsky is Chief Operating Officer of Sage Integration and former president of both Stanley Security Systems and CGL Technologies. He currently sits on the SIA Board of Directors. Bob, let's start with you today. Ragent's kinetic mesh networks are used by your customers to transmit all sorts of critical data, including that from security systems. So it's not surprising that your company has been targeted by cyber attacks. Would you share a little bit about how that's changed the way your company thinks about security? We have multiple times had uh, agents of foreign governments through front companies uh, try to get access to our technology. And it's not that we were indifferent to cyber risks and physical risks before that, but we, we just couldn't be at all cavalier about it after that. And so we're, we're very serious about both on the, on the physical side um, we're disciplined in our physical facilities about protecting access to the buildings and actually protecting our people. Uh, that's something that's always on my mind is, is I don't want anything to happen to our employees. On the, on the, the government attack, government sponsored attacks on our stuff, we, we have since, we just have a, a complete discipline in how we take on new customers, new partners. We, we do a, we have our in-house counsel does a background check on everybody that we may do business with, uh, any, anybody that we may partner with. And we do that check, uh, a thorough check with, with different agencies uh, prior to proceeding with anybody uh, anywhere on the planet. Uh, and simply because we can't talk ourselves out of the idea that it doesn't matter. It does matter. That's for sure. It really does matter. Thank you so much for sharing that. Bobby, let's move on to you. When people first hear about Princeton Identity's biometric identity solutions, access control is probably the first thing that pops into their mind. Are you taking steps to help your sales team educate customers about how biometrics can also be a part of cybersecurity applications? Yeah, absolutely. We always work with our salespeople to talk about not just physical access, but um, to understand where are the gaping holes uh, once once you enroll your entire employee database, could you utilize that employee database for other applications? And a and a perfect fit is in the logical access, right? Um, and cybersecurity. So yes, absolutely, we do start to have those conversations. Our salespeople have conversations with their IT because we do touch their IT director of IT, CIOs, CISOs um, to discuss if you know how to manage our devices so i think it's going to be a continuous education process at this point um and hopefully in the next few years you're going to see more and more enterprise level customers and entities start to think of more of a holistic approach versus thinking of um you know just as a silent approach where okay you can use biometrics only for physical but for cybersecurity, we still want to use two-factor authentication but not leverage biometrics but leverage you know passwords and pin codes and and mobile devices and emails um, versus authenticating the right person who is you know you utilizing um uh, utilizing that device or utilize or getting access to that um you know information yeah i get it it's an ongoing education process so John, as a systems integrator whose team is on the front lines talking to companies about many different technologies, how are manufacturers of physical security solutions doing, providing you with the educational materials you need to talk about crossover ramifications for cybersecurity? 
Um, I, I think they're they're doing an okay job. I think as an industry, SIA has done a fantastic job. Security Industry Association has done a fantastic job integrate uh, educating the integrator on how to get OSDP compliant. I think all of your your cloud manufacturers, whether it be a Phoenix or a Brevo or an Eagle Eye, have done a great job educating. Uh, educating the integrator. I think the integrator's challenge is taking that education to the end user, each end user. Um, and some are more sophisticated than others. Some have larger departments to handle things than others. So I, I think uh, as integrators, we could do a better job educating a, a broad range of clients. Um, I think the manufacturers all in all did, have done a, a, a pretty good job with it. Wow, kudos to the manufacturers. Bob and Bobby, that would include you. Let's hope that more integrators are following Sage's lead and start taking advantage of the many educational resources available from organizations like the SIA and technology manufacturers so that companies can start reaping the benefits of holistic security strategies. That's it for today. Be sure to look for the third installment of this series when we'll hear more on this topic. Thanks for joining us.